a Bible college, like I said, that taught the Bible as the inerrant, infallible word of God. And it, you know, even though we have apologetics and all of those various, various subjects, it's always leading you, led you towards preaching and teaching the gospel just as it is in the Bible. And even though there were things that did not make sense and make less sense now that my eyes are open than they did then, you were taught that you will understand it better by and by. So most, one of the things that I think that most pastors that did not go to Bible college got their call because they sat, like y'all are sitting out here, they sat in, in, in the pews and they were called, received their call listening to their pastors or minister leaders, and they grew up in it, and they felt called to preach. Many of them didn't even go to Bible college. They just said, God has called me to preach the gospel, and they put them through whatever little training they had in their church, and next thing you know, they were ordained, the, you know, they did their trial sermon, and then they ended up, you know, getting their minister's license, and over the years, they moved up from just minister so-and-so to evangelist so-and-so to elder so-and-so, and by chance, they felt the call to start their own ministry. They said, God has called me out to create or to start my own ministry. Say they got no formal biblical training because if you go to some place like a Yale or Harvard um, theolo theological seminary, you will have the Bible taught you as a literary, L-I-T-A-R-A-R-Y, not literal, literary document. So most of these priests and these people in these you know, other ecclesiastical bodies go to that kind of school, know that this is a literary document, know that it's allegory, know all of these things, but yet they are told and commissioned as to part of their profession that you've got to teach it as a literal document. It's and so they're conflicted because they know the truth, and yet they have to get out there and teach it to people as if it is the truth. And the other, on the other hand, those who did not go to college believe it wholeheartedly, especially when they have miracles that have come about in their life. When you hear this, you can't make me doubt them. I know too much about them. You've heard that because they don't realize that within them, innate in each and every one of us, is the ability to create our own reality. So if you if you think on it enough, if you hold it as a constant before you, you're going to manifest it. But here you are giving the glory and honor to something that was manifested to keep you down instead of understanding that the greater one is living in the inside. I feel like I'm preaching. Let's just go down. Uh, that's right on. But I'm serious. I'm serious. That greater one is yes. you, that's in right. you. That's yes. not the Bible say. That's right. You know? That's right. Did not Yeshua say, I am the father of one? Yes. Yes. He would better say, I am the mother of one. But anyway, right. you, you, you see right. what I'm saying? That's right. So you've been taught to give thanks and praise to something outside yourself. You've been taught to look for help outside yourself. And all of what you need is residing on the inside of you right now. Yeah. And you really don't need a, pre a man or woman to teach you. You need to be left up to your own devices. You will discover God within yourself if left, if not taught otherwise. If not taught otherwise, you will find the creator in you. If, 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 if you never gave a child sugar, they would never want candy. They wouldn't miss it. Whatever it is we've been indoctrinated in, it's been given to us, including religion or dogma, not religion, dogma. I'm so, yeah. I'm glad to your wisdom. You're doing excellent. I mean, they're loving you. They're, I mean, there's nothing but people bearing witness at, at this moment. Um, and, I, and I just wanted to kind of like add to that because um, you, you touched on a few things. And, and you said that the Bible, which, and this is a true statement you made, is an astrology book. Right. There's proof if, if we were to just calm our minds and just, you know, put all the emotions down to zero and think. Here's a question. How did the three wise men find Jesus? They charted. They did a chart. I mean, they had to follow what? The stars. Oh, so that's one possible clue that it's an astrology book. When you go to John 1, I believe it is uh, chapter 1, or it's John chapter 1. And I think it's verses 35 through 52. If I'm wrong, you guys can, you know, correct me. Um, it will actually say, behold, the Lamb of God. 
And for those that study the rabbinical or the Judaical uh, dispensations, you will be able to recognize that it goes from Aries to Pisces. From in John 1, uh, and that's verses 32 to 35. For those that want to go and research and check that. And what's in the last thing, and then I yield the floor, um, you had mentioned the Etiman degree. And if those that say sometimes, because you know, my mother, I, you know, she's an ASL interpreter for a very large church, um, you know, they, they you know they'll say, What's the importance of the Etiman? You know, why do I have to go and know that? And when we do check the etymology of certain, certain symbol, you know, words that we come across, black and God, John 1, again, will say that in the beginning. It was the word. You see, and so. The word was God. The word was God. The word is what is God. The word is what is God. The, the word that you speak, the Bible said that the word that you speak is God. And we, we overlook that. It also talks about in um, Malachi about, you know, and the, the son of God will, you know, shall arise with healing in his wings. So we have stood up to pulpits and preached that the son of God is going, will arise, shall arise with healing in his wings. And nobody, sometimes they don't even, even if they read it, and Taj proved it the other day, last night with a young man, you might read something and see one thing, but you're, you're trained to think it says something else. So you see S-O-N. It says S-U-N. It doesn't say the S-O-N of God shall arise for healing in his rings. It says the S-U-N of God. Because those people believed that and, and believed and worshipped the sun because the sun did, did, did a lot of things. It protected them. It, it, it gave them light because when it was dark, they didn't have the, the capacity to see what was be, you know, around them. Could be wild animals or marauders or whatever. But when the, the sun was out, they could see. When the sun was out, their crops were growing. When the sun, the sun did a lot. The body, my sister showed me how at, at, at a certain point, if you stare at the sun for 11 session, seconds as it's setting, how you begin to take in the energy of the sun. You know, and so I found out in the transom over my door in my house that the sun sets in the, in the um, west. I can look right to the transom and she said do 21, I mean do 11 and I was able to do um, to do like 20, 18 or 22 seconds of what she says you're drinking in and the sun is healing, you're eating and nourish, the sun is nourishing you. We're talking, don't look at the sun. You know, speaking of that, I wish I could pull up, I have a poem I did called Sun Kiss and I, and I know Grand Sheik wanted me to do it but I can't do it because it's on my phone and my phone is what's recording this. But one of these days I'm gonna print it out, I'm gonna give somebody else so I can at least read it. But we are sun kissed. Yes. They are sunburned. We have a cosmic uh, relationship for which others yearn. Come yes. on, come on. Yes. So we need to embrace uh, you know, the fact that we and you know we have been created to have a, a love affair, if you will, with the sun that is healing, and we're told we're trying to get away from it. No, no, you know, the sun loves us. It's them other folks that have a problem. Yeah. So, you know, the, 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 but the, another thing that um, Hassan was touching on, if you look over the Bible, you'll see various dispensations that were astrological periods because you have the, what is it, the um, procession of the equinox. Am I, am I am I I'm correct? But you have, you have going through every sign. And the, so the, the sign in the Bible, and I can't tell you the address, but there is a scripture in which the disciples are asking Yahshua, what, what are we going to do? He already told them he's leaving. What do we do next? What are we going to do? What, what is our instruction? How are we going to function without you? And he says to them to go over into you into the next town. Okay. And he says, there you will find a man bearing a water pot. He says, follow ye him. Now what is this, what's significant about that is it, for, for me is that one of the things that I took in, in Bible college was Hebrew manners and customs. And so knowing Hebrew manners and customs, you will know that men did not bear water pots, only the women. Hence the story of the what? Woman at the well. Women will go and draw the wood. Men didn't carry water. Women carry, carry water. So here he's telling them, go to the next town, and there you're going to find a man with a water pot following him. What is the sign of Aquarius? It is a man bearing and pouring out water. He was pointing to the next astrological dispensation, the next age. He said, I'll be with you even until the end of the age, because Piscean was his age. Yes. But in the next age, 
in the next dispensation with the, with the Aquarian aqua light greater than what I did, you can do. Greater. Not because it's 250,000 of you, but because in each and every one of you, each and every one of you will have the ability to be more light, yes. more power, yes. more accessibility to who you are. But we don't teach that, no. I say we. They don't teach that in the Bible. I wish I had a, a church, if you will, of people who just wanted to come together and just get truth. That's what it is here right now. A congregation, actually not a church, okay. a congregation of people, an assembly of people. Because we, in churches, people, um, you know, they gather, but they don't assemble. Mm -hmm. To assemble means to connect. And when you connect, you should be connected on the basis of what's true. That's right. You got folks sitting in the pews, their mind is all, did, the, did I turn my pot off? Or am I gonna get forgiven for what I did last night? Or, or what am I gonna do, what I'm gonna do when I do the benediction? They are not in there all on one accord. But when you get into a, a, a situation like this, where we are coming together, just like us, we Moors who are awakening and coming together all over the world, even online right now, of one mind, Brother Taj talked about um, last week, he started to talk about the 100th monkey principle and he went into it a little bit and I went back and I found that and I was listening to it and actually I thought I preached it or taught it after I woke up and I had woken up and I was still kind of in the preaching mode. And there's a young lady that was asked a lot of questions during the, during the thing, but the bottom line is with that story is that there is a, a, a point at which when enough people like the, I, I call it an apex, has been, you know, it's a collective consciousness, really what it's called. With enough criti with our critical mass. Yes. Thank you. When critical mass is achieved, meaning, you know, you don't know if you are the one that is going to take to make this thing now jump all around the world to every mind, whether they were thinking about it or not. So the more we are more, the more we are, are true to who we are, it begins to create an energetic, critical mass that at some point, the, the principle is, you could be that hundredth monkey. You could just be, it could be you needing to get to, to that place of acceptance of who you are that makes it available and accessible to the whole. So nobody ever knows if it's them or not. So if you do nothing, it could, you could be the holdup. Yes. That, that is the principle. This, this, this monkey was an 18 month old monkey on this island in Japan who was saying, I like the, the, the sweet potatoes, the yams, but this grit, now the, the, all the monkeys have been eating this stuff with grit on them. This 18 month old monkey, Macau monkey, goes and, and takes it to the river and rinses it off. Says it tastes better without the sand. Then she goes and she teaches her, her fellow little monkeys, the, 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 you know, in the tribe, the little, whatever they call them, so I don't know what they, troops, or monkeys. Uh, how to do it. They all began to go back and teach their parents. Now, in this interesting? It was the young ones, and this is a real story. Uh -huh. The young monkeys began to teach their parents how to not just eat the dirty um, sweet potatoes, how not just to take what the dirt that we've, the crumbs that we've been given, you know, not eat it with the dirt on it, but to take it to the river and wash it off, it tastes so much better. When you take this, these lies and wash them off, and get the truth. It tastes so much better. But these young monkeys taught their parents, their, and the parents, one day they, they found out that a bunch of monkeys on the island were now washing. Not all of them, because the ones that didn't have any babies to teach them weren't washing their, their, their sweet potatoes. But one day, they noticed that every monkey on the island, regardless of whether they had been taught, started to wash their hands. But that's not the phenomenon. Other researchers reported on other islands around the area that on that day, every monkey that received a yam took it to the water and washed it. Mm. They had never been in the presence of that group of monkeys over here on this island, but one day critical mass was received, achieved, and everybody was doing it. That's the same thing that we are moving up to with our nationality and our status of who we are. Every time you get a chance to show somebody, you know, what you do know. And if you don't know, because I don't know everything. So, I mean, I'm, I'm afraid of what kind of questions might come across here. But what I do know, I'll tell you what I know. 
I'm not going to tell you what I believe. I'm going to tell you what I know. But I know for a fact that we have to keep at this because critical mass will be achieved. Yes. All right. I'm going to mix both of Mother Michelle Harley's uh, uh, postings. I'm going to mention her second one first because she was backing you up when you were talking about the hold on one second the pot, right? You were talking about the water pot, correct? Mm -hmm. She said that is Luke 2210. Thank you. Um, and then she had a question, so I was preparing myself to answer it. Okay. Because um, she said, and I'm going to quote her, the brother that is moderating mentioned Pisces and John a few minutes ago. Brother, how are you connecting Pisces with that? There are several Pisces on this Facebook Live, and she gives the angel emoji. Um, so so I, I, I did. And I was, I'm a Pisces. Yes, you are. So I was just saying, okay, so I had to grab my Joyce Meyer Amplified Bible. Oh my goodness, the boys got Joyce Meyer. Anyway, uh, a Joyce Meyer Amplified Bible. That's my, one of my choices. Um, I see it as John uh, chapter 1, and it is verse uh, 35 through 51. And I was just going to show her real quick from, if people can research uh, C. Freeman L, the C. Freeman L chart, and there's a chart of the good being, swastika, and he actually shows how every part of the zodiac ties into a disciple and ties into a tribe. So I was just going to say briefly that when you look at um, even though Pisces isn't particularly mentioned in the in John 1, 31 through 50, I mean 35 through 51, you will know that Aries is is for Peter and the tribe of Gad. You will know that Taurus is Simon and the tribe of Asher. Gemini is James and Levi. Cancer is Andrew and Zebulon. Leo is John and Judah. Virgo is Philip and Naphtali. Libra is Nathaniel and Issachar. Scorpio is Thomas and Dan. Sagittarius is James and Joseph. Capricorn is Matthew and Benjamin. Thaddeus and Reuben for Aquarius, and Pisces is Judas and Simeon. Judas. So I was just going to show the family what it is I was actually sort of kind of reading from, if they can see that. And it's a brief list of showing them that this was just some notes that I took from the picture that Brother C. Freeman L. had actually provided. So what I do sometimes when I'm studying in astrology, a cross-referencing with the Helios Bibliotech, what we call the Bible, and other uh, references, Qurans, whatever the case may be, because they're all astrological books, okay, as well as law books. What, um, what I do is I make the connections, okay? So you're not gonna get everything just from the Bible. You're gonna have to take the different resources and discern the basic connections. So that's just what I wanted to say to that sister. And <laughs> lastly, um, let's see um, if there's anyone else that had a question and it says, no, that's it. Everyone is just saying thank you so much. Like, you're, you're very quite well, this is, this is good timing because Grand Sheik has just entered the building and he comes in with a copy of my book, which I already have read. A poem. <laughs> he got my book with it. So um, we are. Um, yeah. I can't zoom out for some reason. It won't let you zoom out. Yeah, it's, it's, they change things. Um, uh, Facebook Live has changed so that you can't zoom. You set at one place, and and you can't zoom in and out and so forth. But let let us receive. Grand Sheik Taj Tariq Bay. Right now he's kissing the children because he loves him. Can I tell you, you love him? Thank you. Yay! I apologize for being super right. late, That's but I need to be eight people, to be honest with you. Well, the sister did well. Yeah, someone right here. Oh, please a lot. Now, um, you all know that the prophet said, 
for us to help in the great missionary work and mainly primary to the Morris Divine National Movement is the enforcement of the Constitution for the United States. Um, and I had been um, planning to actually prepare some presentation, but I'll go ahead and did since I'm so late. And it's very important because a lot of people aren't aware that the organic constitution had been undermined. And when the prophet said for us to go back to that state of mind of our ancient mothers and fathers, he knew that we would find it. And um, I've had the um, honor to deal with a lot of thinkers. And the prophet uh, reminded us that more genius citizens would arrive. That's right. And I'm thankful for that. You know, many of you, Brother Shalay Moore, Brother Truth, and his beautiful bride, yes. and the children. Yes. And, and that they're here is great. And his brother has produced a lot of literature that you all have yet to see for the children. And um, it's sort of like we could be talking for two hours and we wouldn't begin to read and dip into, you know, what's going on. But I'm appreciative, you know, when I see growth and development with people who are not followers, but are thinkers on their own right. But when given certain fundamental truths, we'll take it and build on it, like the prophet said. And that's what nece what's necessary, and that's really what's going to liberate the children. Belief systems are not going to liberate them. Knowledge will. Truth will. You got the right name, too. Anyway. So, now keep in mind how many of you, and I know you know, but I'm going to say this anyway for the listeners also. How many of you know that the organic constitution for the United States was secretly overthrown? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You, you don't know that, All right. Now, many people are assuming that they've been operating or that they've been governed by a body of men and women who were legitimate government. Let's make this very clear for those who do not know. In 1861, when the Congress for the United States at North America adjourned Sina Dia, it was really a coup d'etat. And they set up for themselves secretly a kingship oligarchy. And they infused the Barristers Association of England as owners of the court and judicial system at North America for the specific purpose of creating barratry arguments and undermining the republic. Are we clear? This is known by all scholars. This is known by all these leader guys that keep on digging in ancient Africa and act like they don't know contemporary Africa, if you get the point. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not unknown information. However, when it comes to your attention, not only will corrupt institutions collapse, but also minion institutions that have been keeping you busy marching and praying while you get raped. Mm -hmm. When That's you right. find out that they've been part of this thing. And this is why Nobudrali warned you, and he said, the half has not been told if I told you everything, you go back to sleep. And he reminds you again so you wouldn't get comfortable. He said, be careful, Moors. Some of your own brothers and sisters wearing turbans and fezzes will be trying to put you back into slavery. And he also said, he said, um, I'm not going to wake up all the Moors at one time because they might tear up something. That's right. <laughs> However, the Moors are waking up across the world now. You know, because, and I'm also grateful and honored to have Empress with us five generations. Of Central Mexico, Honduras, and Diplomat of Peace, Dr. Sadie's daughter, Tia. And they are both masters with the body and with the herbs. And they're working to bring harmony to the Moors of the North and also to remind the Moors of the North that we're Moors from the South to the North. And also she shared with us that in 
Come on, come on, come on up. I know you got a little bit of fur coat on. <laughs> from Oyagua, the great clock from the Alhambra, 900 years old in Guatemala. I want to, before you start, Empress, I want to interject. When the Circle 7 Quran closes out, what does the Prophet say? This is the uniting of Asia. Of Asia. Speak, Empress. Yes. It's a privilege to, to be here and for me in such a beautiful group of people that have a mind to be able to move forward. Because like we say on our island, it ain't no stopping us now. <laughs> so going back to the beginning who we really is, way over yonder in the Caribbean Sea, the last island to be discovered, because they really think that we are Honduras. But we've been governor under the sovereignty of Honduras since 1860. And since then, God had called us to the enlightenment of freedom, to be able to have the world know that this is a group of people that now know that we are afro asiatics now know that we are Moors, now know that we were there from the beginning, and we are able to prove that all the different things the clock that is in Comayagua, Honduras. That's right. The clock been there built by the Moors since 1100. Since 1100. Wow. <laughs> and still working. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the mic. Stay in the mic. <laughs> and still working. Wow. So wow. it's a joy and a privilege to be able to stand here and to represent the Bay Islands of Honduras. Of Amexa. Of Amexa. Excuse me. <laughs> Central Amexa. And we've been there before. There was a Honduras. So we are here representing our people in unity and in love. And it's a privilege to be with Sister Laila and so we're happy to be with you guys tonight to let you all know, united we stand. Thank you. As a reminder, and this is redundant, when um, President Obama went to, um, he cooked up Egypt and spoke before the delegates. He exposed that the American Constitution come from Muslim law, because it does. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are scholars, you know that the alleged founding fathers, Jefferson, Ben Franklin, John Adams, were all deists. They were not Christians. And they all had Korans. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Thomas Jefferson did to try to counter the, the unum sanctum operations of the Vatican was he uh, did what is called the Jefferson's Bible. And what he did, he tried to expose the anthropomorphic nature and wash it out. And so a lot of um, senators and congressmen, even under the kingship oligarchy, would take their oaths on the Koran and the Bible, or Jefferson Bible. And the other issue is, um, to bring our people back into a consciousness of connection to both the land and the Constitution. Because many of them have been miseducated into thinking that it had nothing to do with them. Um, and key, by most people, many of the people not being aware that the organic Constitution also had original Article Amendment 13, which is the mobility clause with 20 sections. 
scholars know about it, but they haven't been sharing it with the people. You know, most of you who've been studying know that already. And it's important for you to enforce that constitution and become aware of it because the Europeans being under pressure by the different nation states on, on the planet who are no longer buying their T-bonds that were put on your back since the Civil War, which is the foundation of the economic system. Um, they went bankrupt again September the 30th, this, this past September. And um, so when you see Donald Trump wearing two, two masks, sort of uh, like, seemed like this dog and pony show, they're marking time because they've been given about five, about 556 or 54 billion to hold them over for a minute with the requirement that they start dismantling the corrupt oligarchy that's been operating at North America. So a lot of the things that you see going on in the background is really a low, it's really not low level, but as far as the public knows, it's a low level civil war going on between the alphabet soup orders, all which belong to Opus Dei and the Bishopric of Rome. But the key is, above all, is that while Rome is doing what Rome has been doing, it is your duty and your responsibility to start redeeming your families. Now, um, as of late, you know, uh, the, their budget, because they had, CIA has a budget for trolls. And when I started telling the people about setting up trust for themselves, um, and the reason why I wanted you to study is so that opportunists amongst us wouldn't come selling you packages and then trying to rape you. Um, and um, the prophet set up a trust for us, but uh, he had traitors amongst himself. And so those things were not carried out. But understanding that the collapsing economy is built upon your backs, and one of the major reasons why our people have not developed what is called old money, that's a term that's used, mm -hmm. meaning they're dealing with accumulated hereditaments. And not that we haven't had some things left even after colonial operations. One of the reasons why our families are poor is because the corporate operators and owners of the corporate foreign states pretending to be government at North America have been systematically robbing you and is cheating your states under the guise of being the sovereign subdivisional uh, departments for the United States, which they actually secretly overthrew. Are we clear? Yeah. Now, knowing that many people among our own who knew these things would attack, as soon as I start exposing this information, I put it out anyway. You know, knowing that the CIA already has a budget to pay them off to attack anybody that tries to liberate you all whether it's Asiatic or Europeans. So expect that. However, with some conversations that we were having earlier, um, you know, with people um, trying to find out what to do, how to do, I say do do, and we give them somewhat templates to start. Because you must act and you must have an ongoing adverse claim on your estate, not after the fact ongoing because what that does it neutralizes the value of the stocks that they have on the market that the people don't know is really representative of them the people are actually the stock market you know and it confuses them because they think they have money and they think that their labor belongs to them and they think that uh, mortgages represents a debt to buying a house, not knowing it's a sharecropping agreement. And so they've been systematically destroying our families. And also with the Christian black codes that they adopted in all the states in 1868 after they closed the Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands. That's why you never got 30, 40 acres and a mule, which was also on the low side. All right? Now, with constitutional enforcement, it may appear to be, um, as some might say, late 
or kind of irrelevant since we all know that actually technology is 500 years ahead. The deal is for you to survive the transfer period is that there has to be a level of sincerity, energy that, that emanates from you, the people. Uh, that nature will rescue you and reattach you to the electrical grid. Mm -hmm. That is for all living beings on, on the earth, yeah. of which we have been disconnected. Mm -hmm. Are we clear? Yeah. Um, don't worry about right now trying to figure out what I'm telling you, meaning that if you don't understand immediately, because the spirit man knows. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Um, and the level of sincerity that you have will connect with the Akashic Record and it will attach to others. Mm -hmm. We're reaching what is known as an apex point. Mm -hmm. And the apex point is whereas when a living species demonstrates to Mother Nature that they have respect for their own existence mm -hmm. or honor for their own purpose of being, then divine order comes to your aid. Before that, you don't have it, not only that, you're on a path of death. By your own will. And because we're beings of free will, we're by nature and by fact co-creators. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that the prophet presented to us, particularly in, in uh, Circle 7 Quran, which was specifically prepared for us, is to let you be aware of and, and to remind you that you are lords of the plane of things made manifest. So you need not look outside yourself. You must look in yourself because it will already place in you what you need. Mm -hmm. But because we gave up that consciousness to follow after Rome, mm -hmm. we gave up our birthright. Mm -hmm. You know, now Rome has been feeding on us for quite some time. But it's gotten so bad, whereas the earth is being damaged too, and we and the earth are one. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening with many of the nations. Now, Rome's agenda, Uno Sanctum agenda, which they're disguised under what they call um, Agenda 21 now, and also Agenda 30, that keeps changing the name. Um, they had. Um, They've been using what they call designer virus in, um, projections against the Asiatic families. One of the ones they created, amongst others, is SARS and targeted Manchuria. Now, a couple of years ago, those of you who have been keeping up with world politics, the Manchurian families wrote a scathing report against the United States Corporation Company pretenders to be government in the North and their mistreatment of us. So the, the Europeans made a counterattack with SARS and some other viruses and uh, attacked the bird population and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, fact. From a pool of over 20 million perfected assassins was released on the planet about six and a half million countermeasures against European colonial operations on Earth planet. So the first time from the Asiatic nations in, in a couple of centuries has there been a true countermeasure to European colonial operations. So they have that pressure, and then they have uh, some P2 Masons who are directly tied to the Vatican um, who are countering um, the Unum Sanctum operations that have been in operation for quite some time. And then you have others who have been seated for quite some time who have been enjoying the crown and enjoying our thrones for all this time who are trying to maintain status quo. So there's a civil war going on. For real, for real, for real. Now, um, we already know, and we've been telling people for 10, 15 years, you know, trying to prepare the people. Um, the directed energy, ray, ray gun technology, which is ancient stuff, uh, is what they're burning California up with. 
This is why you see houses growing and trees standing in place right next to the house. And light poles melted. Yeah, stuff like that. Now, um, we've known about it, but most people, when we've been telling people about these things, think, thought that we was out to lunch or renegade more type thing. You know, because the Grand Sikhs who have been told this information by the prophet and charged to take this information to the hedges and the highways and to for all corners of the earth, they start making little churches instead of going out and awakening our people. And so our people have become victimized because these people have betrayed the prophet and have not been charged. I'm not going to preoccupy myself arguing with them or about them. You know, my interest is, because I'll be in the field with the people, is for those who will listen to start saving your family. Now, the prophet reminded you to put away fresh water and, you know, beans and dry goods, put them in galvanized stuff to protect them for the rodents because the Europeans are going to try to starve you out. You've already known that, but you're getting ready to get it hit for real. So, um, and also get with the wars who learn techniques of drafting water with stones, with stones, quartz stones, and plastic in dishes, you know, so you can get fresh water because they're poisoning water deliberately. And the others, you already know, um, don't brush your children's teeth with the regular toothbrush, the toothpaste. Get neem as, as for one. Um, because the fluoride is what they used in the Second World War for both uh, sterilization and also create brain term tumors. All right, so they're giving you tumors right through the toothpaste. Just for, you know, another point of reference to you. This has, this is even beyond the GMOs with the foods. Um, with the toxins that they're putting in all smoke products to create cancers. And this is why you see them building these hospitals all over the place, because they're at, actually death camps. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the people are paying to die. Mm -hmm. yes. If you get the point. So those who know, you do what you do, do what you know. But you can't say that you weren't told. Um, now, some people would say, well, what does that have to do with the Constitution? The Constitution for the United States Republic, coming from Muslim law, is actually based on the Zodiac Constitution, the culture of the Moors, which is why you have the Zodiac in the middle of the courtyard of the mosque that is City Hall in Philadelphia. So, if you step off, that architecture is a mosque. And it has your four gates, your north gate, east gate, west gate, south gate. That's the news, y'all. Now, the original zodiac that would be in the center of the courtyard, they actually covered it up with tar and then painted one on top of it so that people would not see the brass grids or the ley lines that was laid out in the old zodiac that showed you the sister cities around the planet, i.e. metrology how cities are laid out. And as you know that Mecca and Chicago are sister cities. And also it would show you the triangulation of the old trails that we get for trade here in the north. Um, so that's covered up. It's there, but it's covered up. And this is so that people and the, the, the following generations would not be aware of it and would not start paying attention to the intricacies of that zodiac and the ley lines that were laid in it with brass inlay. Very, very intricate uh, because that's your science, all right? And then this is why they have the mummers parade there and it ends at 1 North Broad Street at the Masonic Lodge and they have George Washington in there because George Washington is given the favor of the Prater who converted all of our Moorish estates into the states. So the states that you see now, although the jurisdictional lines are variable in certain areas, are actually regencies, they're Moorish regencies. You know, and so the prophet set up temples in all of the state regency territories and to assure that the Moors would 
learn proper government again. Act one, he set in order that the chairman, moderator, would make law and enforce law. You know, if it's known before all the members of the War Science Temple of America. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things they did when they got the property out of the way is told the people that Jurali didn't teach civics or law. And that the movement is only a religious organization. Um, people who know government know that's a sellout. People who don't get caught in the emotions. And it will be these people first who will attack anyone who tries to liberate you. You understand? So don't be surprised. However, uh, it's your birthright. It's your birthright. You know, so with the enforcement of the Constitution, what occurs is, is that it will force the corporate owners of the foreign United States Service Corporation, which is registered in France, and uh, it will cause their stock to die. Not unlike you see in the Wizard of Oz, when you see the house fall from heaven on the wicked witch and her stockings curl up under the house uh -huh. that falls from the, the ethers. Of course, you know the house is the mansion of the Zodiac. And as you declare your right of claim on the land, the stocks, no matter who has them, curls up. You will never capture them, though they may promise you that you will. You will never capture them. Now, and, and one of the things that we talked about, myself, Brother Shalane Moore, earlier, and myself and Dr. Nayula, and with truth, we talked about this quite a bit. You know, for those of you who have um, some experience in studying government and social science, know that approximately around 35 years ago, they were doing what is called um, HMOs. Mm -hmm. And HMOs were attempts to get uh, control of the Sister Q trust and the Cedars Trust systems that were set up by the Jesuit order after the fall of the Red House on January the 1st. That's why they do this, the, their fiscal assessments and call the new year January the 1st because that's when the Red House fell in Al Andalusia. And this is also a signal when Michelle goes there when Obama is exposing the history. All right. And then they have, she wears a red dress and they take pictures for all the diplomats of the world to take and then they cut out the trading banner and leave the true Al Moroccan flag. Obvious for all to see. Then they walk through a double doors, and double doors represent the higher self and the lower self. Then they come back and they sign the rights of indigenous people for these people to declare their nationality. Backed up the year prior to that, December 22nd, first full day of the winter solstice of the North Gate. Rahm Emanuel, the Jew leaves administration, goes to Chicago, runs for mayor, and issues from his desk the truth about Nova Drali and the truth that these people are heirs and the people of the land, North, Central, and South America, Moorish Americans. And then commands that the people of Chicago recognize January the 8th to the 15th, Nova Drali Day, etc., celebrating the prophet's birthday. And he's a Jew. Now, keep in mind, your so-called black leaders stay away from that information because most of them are owned by these same people, which is why most of them attack this information, because it exposes them. And they had these people thinking that they were working for you because they said black and Afrocentricity and Kemet and stuff like that. And as soon as they called you black, they put you under the Christian black codes, helping to steal your birthright, and they get kickbacks with a 501c3 skull and bones agreement, mm -hmm. pretending they came from Jesus and God and Allah. Now, again, point being made. For those of you also who do study in social science and science of government, um, you will um, find in both the congressional records and also in uh, history books that they didn't, all of them, they didn't get off the markets. And you'll see that in the southern state territories, 
one of the major activities that they initiated was to dismantle all Republican forms of government due to its relationship to us. And it was necessary for them to instill the U.S. democracy platform in order to institutionalize forced servitude or what is connotatively referred to as slavery. The enforcement of the organic constitution would have checked that and countered that because it cannot operate under the Republican form of government. And so this is why it has been necessary for them to promote the U.S. democracy platform as legitimate when it's absolutely not. It is actually a platform of imposters, a platform of Kabbalists, um, Cabal is a group of traitors, essentially. And for those, most of you know that, but, I'm, but again, I wanted to get into that because I, I think a lot of times people listen to this information and don't act on it, not knowing that they're getting ready to get fried. And because Rome is under a lot of pressure, they're circling their wagons and trying to hurt as many people as they can. Are we clear? Okay. Now, nature will not come to your aid if you do not come to your truth with sincerity. Because that's what reconnects the electrical grid. You must be sincere. But you can't be sincere when you don't know what's up. Which is why you're being told. You know, what, why the prophet gave us certain keys because he knew that those who would dig would find them. But those who were not sincere wouldn't find them. A child could find them if they're sincere. You know, uh, and of course, this is also why we tell people to go into congressional records. Why about 25 years ago, we start sharing with them the um, original article of Amendment 13 with its 20 sections. Um, then uh, about... Uh, 20 years ago, we started sharing House Joint Resolution 192, 73rd Congress in session, June the 5th of 33. The Buck Act, um, Trading with the Enemy Act, uh, and those are just notables. And so once you go into those things, your naivety leaves, meaning that you're no longer politically naive. If you are, then you either just totally retarded or a brick. But you'll immediately recognize that persons who've been playing with you in the name of liberating our people have been knowingly lying to you. People that you've trusted, that you've admired as honorable guys and girls or leaders of black organizations. It's not, it's not a comfortable thing to find out. Um, you'll recognize uncomfortably um, why people like Malcolm who find out and don't sell out and get murdered, you know, stuff like that, yeah. Um, but back to the point, who has the Constitution in here? I know Dee has one. Did you read it? You read the Constitution? Ten people? Did you read the Constitution? Yes. Oh, you went over it for them? No, 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 we did. That's what I asked you. You know, you didn't walk around and do it. No, no. But some of it worked. Now, um, Now, these particular, these particular sections of the American Constitution, I want you to pay attention to and ask questions about them, if you please to. It is very important. Now, read um, Article 3, Section 1 and 2. Pay attention, take notes, prepare questions. Because as we interchange, we'll start dealing with some issues that we want to talk about. Reading the uh, organic 
uh, North American Republic Constitution for the United States of America, ratified 1791. Article three, section one. The judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. The judges, both of the Supreme and inferior courts, shall hold their office during good behavior and shall, at stated times, re I'm sorry, receive for their services a compensation which shall not be diminished during their continuance in office. That was section one. Section two, article three, section two. The judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity arising under this constitution, the laws of the United States and treaties made and which shall be made under their authority to all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls. Consuls. To all cases of admiralty and maritime jurisdiction. Yes. To controversies to which the United States shall be a party. To controversies between two or more states. Between a state and citizens of another state between citizens of different states, different citizens of the same state claiming lands under grants of different states and between a state or the citizens thereof in foreign states, citizens or subjects. All right, what is it clear that you all see in Article 1 and on the apartment, Article 3, Section 1, Section 2. Number one, it is a universal document. It's an international document. It is rooted in diversity. Diversity is controversy between peoples of different nation states that are on the land. Thus, consular court is a necessity for this constitution to be enforced. Are we clear? So when Noah Drawley set up the old Canaanite temple, the Moore's Temple of Science, he set up within it a chamber. And that chamber in law receives diplomats. That's what that chamber is. So it's a crown of ministry in divine law and a crown of ministry in administrative government. Therefore, the Moore's Science Temple of America and Islam represents law, order, and governmental principles. And you're given a divine constitution of bylaws to train you in that manner. In other words, it's preparing you for the outside world. And I don't have to tell you about the difficulty we have with people who have been controlling the people and thinking they own the birthright, which they do not and telling you to take responsibility since they betrayed you and the prophet has made a lot of people subject to a lot of injury that we've been working to try to fix, try to help along the way, and being attacked for doing it. However, if you study, you will take responsibility and help yourself and help us help you and help others who are active and not passive help to protect the prophet and your divine and national movement. Now, if you fail to, re to enforce that Constitution, the suffering that you see now will increase and get worse. And in the process, before it gets fixed, many of you will not be here, because Rome is not playing. You know? And because those who should have carried out the law have not, they've sacrificed you in the process. But I say that it does not have to be that way. You know, you can take responsibility. And Duali said this. He says, many of the grand governors have followers. Many of the grand sheiks have followers. Many of the sheikhesses have followers. But I, your prophet, have no followers. 
And what he's saying is, he didn't come here to make followers. He came to liberate you. He came to take you and have you place your own hand in Allah's hand. He came to remove the middleman priesthood. That's why they don't like